Cynthia, I did it. <laughs> you did it. My goodness. Oh, I'm so happy for you. I am so delighted. How do you feel now that you're PMP? Um, I still have knots in my stomach. <laughs> like that really happened. It's really over with. I can't believe it because my life has been so dedicated to it, um, the, wow. especially the last couple of weeks. So it just feels it feels really good, but it's still unrealistic at this <laughs> point right now. <laughs> wow. So tell me what was going through your mind. You walk into the exam. Did, they, did you do it at home or you, did, you went to a test center, right? I did. I went to a test center. Right. And then they kind of uh, rustle you up, tell you, OK, make sure you're not carrying anything. Then boom. The exam starts. How do you feel on question one? Um, well, well, one tip I will share is uh, somebody told me that taking the test in the morning instead of the afternoon makes a big difference because of the way that your brain functions and having a full night's sleep and just who you are. Like if you think about your work day, two to three, that's kind of your crash, right? That's when you need that other cup of coffee to keep going. And once they said, said that it kind of kept resonating with me. So I actually called the test center because my test was at 1230. And I just said, you know, I really um, was wondering if you have any spots open this morning, I would like to get mm -hmm. this test done sooner because it's such a long test. And the very sweet guy, Jim put me on hold and he came back and he said, we can fit you in at 10 o'clock. Wow. And I said, I am on my way. <laughs> so, you are agile. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> but he was, it, they were super sweet. They're super nice. Go over the rules, make sure you know the rules before you go in. And, um, that first 10 questions, I would say, I think I flagged like six of them because <laughs> I was like, I just want to make sure I just want to make sure. And I knew once I got rolling, because that's kind of my, uh, theme that I've had with my mock exams mm. that once you get rolling, um, you realize like, oh, there's certain things I'm not paying attention to because the anxiety is taking over. So I flagged a bunch, got through, came back and revisited everything. And there was probably four that I changed the answer to when mm. I realized like, oh, wow. they said first, they wow. said next, they said, what should they do? Not what should they do first, but mm. what should they do? And so little things like that, you start to catch when the anxiety kind of settles down a little bit. The first 60, I thought I bombed completely. <laughs> I was. How did you last... feel though? Were you feeling despondent or were you just keeping hopeful and just going? So I gave myself a little pep talk on my break <laughs> and I went to the bathroom and I kind of walked around and I meditated for a minute and I was like, you got this, like, you got to stop. You have to stop overthinking. Mm. Um, even if you bomb the last or the first 60, you got 50% of them, right. Which means if you get the next one twenty right, you're golden. Mm. And like so that's that. what I just kept telling myself, just go in. And for some reason, I don't know if it was the questions or if it was my mind frame, but the next 60, I only flagged three out of all of them. I felt so confident in them what I was doing and how I was doing it. Mm. And, um, yeah, it just, it kind of worked that way, you know, and I felt really good about it. Were you looking at the time, the countdown, was that kind of guiding you as you were going through? You guys are going to laugh at me. So you have 230 minutes and 180 questions, which is 76 minutes per 60 questions. So I wrote down, as soon as I got in there, I wrote down 150 and I wrote down 76. Mm -hmm. And those are my two goals for completing each of the three for three sets of questions. And I finished like an um, 52 minutes early. Wow. I'm a fast reader, which is actually mm -hmm. not always a good thing. <laughs> so don't think it's a great thing when some of you are like, I'm a slow <laughs> reader. It's not always because I miss things. Um, I missed keywords that matter, but um. I kept looking. The only thing I did was concentrate on that 150. And then I'd go back and see where I'm at and see how many I've done. And that really helped me to kind of keep my pace hmm. and make sure that I had time to review everything. I think the first 60, I took up almost all of it. I think it was at like 160 minutes or something. Hmm. Wow. So tell us the night before, did you take things easy or did you go hard into content? What did you do? Confession time. 
<laughs> um, so the morning before I studied for about, I would say three hours okay. and it was just gaps that I knew gaps that I knew I had reviewing questions that I missed look, checking my like mind and where I was at and who I am according to PMI, not who I am according to me as a PM, but who I am according to PMI. And I just wrote things down because I feel like when I write things down, it helped me. And that, um, that's what I did. And about 1230, I stopped everything and I said, I'm done. This is oh. it. This is the end of the line. And then the next day I took it. So wow. I did give myself a break. Wow. Wow. Let's t go into a little bit more detail. I, I really want people to know all that you did. So let's jump into a few quick questions. Why did you want to do this in the first place? Did anyone threaten, you have to do this in this job or else? Oh, why did you do it? So many years ago, I went on a hike with this gal through Meetup and she is a project manager, which is what I was. And she was telling me how she was a certified project manager. And I started asking her questions about it. And then I took a plunge about three years ago and quit a job where I was being not treated the way that I should be treated. Mm. And when I started applying for jobs, this PMP certification kept popping up. And um, especially in, I don't know if it's uh, common on the East Coast, but on the West Coast, especially in California, it's quite common to be listed, especially for IT, medical, which tend to have a higher pay than construction, which is what I specialize in right now. Mm. And so I just told myself, I, you need to do it. You just need to do it because it opens up opportunities for you. And so um, when I was on maternity leave last year, I submitted my application and started studying, took the course, mm. um, totally bombed it in July. Mm bomb the test completely because I thought I, I knew what I was doing and I had no clue. And then I met Phil. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I started meeting a community of people who wanted to accomplish this with me. Mm. And it, it made me, it gave me drive to keep going. And you really fought because being a family person, it's not easy to take time out and to stay on it. And you're whacked off the horse and you got to get back on and you you know, and there's ebbs and flows, but uh, you you really did well in staying on it and going all the way. So let's talk about the PMBOK guide and all the materials. What do you have to say about PMBOK, Agile Practice Guide, Immersion, uh, the Immersion book, PMP Exam Immersion? How did you juggle the studying? Because I know at some point you were asking a lot of great questions about Agile and we were going in and you, you came for the daily scrums and we were really going in on it. But after all of those episodes, did you go back and revisit any of the books? How did you study? So um, I was really hard and then I rescheduled my test. I think you remember that. It, my test was in August and then I rescheduled it for October. I took a break for a couple of weeks because I know who I am and I know my mind and the way it works. And sometimes when I step back instead of in the moment of things and I, then I come back to something, I start to absorb the information in a different way. And um, that's what happened. I took about a two week break after I rescheduled my test. And then I started to come back and I just went through, you know, you gave me some advice about ITTOs and you gave me um, some advice about agile and understanding. And that's what I focused on the most yeah. was knowing it's not necessarily that you have to memorize. I can't even explain that enough. It's not memorization. None of it is memorization. All of it is understanding how it flows together. So if you know that an integrated, you know, change process takes place because it, because somebody desires something, especially somebody of higher authority, then you know how to treat it and you know how to treat the person and you know how to treat the team as a servant leader. And so it, it, my mind changed, something shifted. Hmm. And um, Agile Practice Guide is huge. <laughs> Your Golden Roads, 
uh, were super, super helpful. Mm. Understanding those key things that are really emphasized and then knowing how to treat them situationally. Hmm. That's good um, to know. And it's quite a big book. So, I mean, did you read it out of order? Did you print some tiny pieces of it? How, how did you tackle it? It's huge. It is huge. So um, I actually cheated and started with the Golden Road. <laughs> good. That's it, good. <laughs> and, and I said, okay, I don't get this. I don't get that. And then through the process of mock exams, I mm. saw my gaps and then I came back and revisited it. Mm. As far as the ITTOs, you had suggested, you need to go through each of them and look at the chart. This right. is one of your YouTube videos, I believe. You need to look at the actual charts that are in there. Right. And then you need to understand the charts. And then you need to go to your tools and techniques and understand why. It's not necessarily what they are, but why. Why would you why? do a benefit cost analysis? Exactly. Like what's um, and then... And then your outputs, of course, are everything that keeps leading the project. So outputs are almost assumed. If, mm. if it's mentioned, it's probably there. It's an output. <laughs> like It's coming from that place. Or it comes from many different places. A project management plan has a thousand in, or a thousand inputs to it, which mm -hmm. are a bunch of outputs, you know. Mm -hmm. so. you, you drank the Kool-Aid. That's certified for sure. Just your language <laughs> tells me you drank the Kool-Aid, you drank it all. <laughs> let's talk about these areas of people, process, business, and, and let's let's give you kudos for you know beating beating the life out of the ridiculous test today, <laughs> because that was above, above, above. That's that's really awesome. How did you master it? Did you ever feel like I got total mastery of people, process, business? Did you feel that way before you got into the exam? Was there any area you were feeling? I don't really, I don't really know about this. Any of the ones on the screen? There's one area that I struggle with the most, and that is, um, I would guess it would be under people. Mm. And that would be, do I consult the team or do I analyze the situation first mm. and then consult the team? Or do I analyze the situation and make a plan? And I still don't know the answer. <laughs> but I just know target. what I answered, but I don't know the so answer. So what was your disposition? Tell us. <laughs> My disposition was, is no matter if you're agile or traditional, it doesn't matter what approach you're taking, you service the team, but you're also servicing the pro project. And so if I thought that was moving the project forward, mm. then that's what I would do. Got it. Um, and I do feel that that might be the right way to approach it because I do feel sometimes you need to talk to the team, but then I feel sometimes I don't care what the team has to say. I got to get this going for them. <laughs> I have to remove their yeah. impediments. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. There are times when what to do next is not to go do talking to the team maybe the question has breadcrumbs that alludes to something like that, that you've already maybe even done that. So I agree wholeheartedly with your, you know, is it moving the project forward? That should always be the, the question. And that's yeah. good. What about the concept of um, agile? Did you finally get to a point where you're like, I got it all. I got the 353. I got all the goofy releases, the product roadmap. Did you get to a point? <laughs> You know, I did the problem that I was struggling with agile was hybrid because mm. I'm a linear type A personality. So you tell me, am I running this pr predictive or am I running this agile? Like it, that's really, that's a really gray area for me because it is a gray area and, and it's very difficult for me um, to say what to do. And I used I think on a lot of those reflecting back, I probably use a lot of process of elimination. Like mm -hmm. I definitely would not do that because you never go to the project sponsor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. unless it's an organizational, by the way, your uh, Marilyn mentioned iteration or integration. Integration, integration. is huge, 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 huge. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that a process that has two two processes, a knowledge area that has two processes would be so big 
in mm. a test. I didn't even know you'd come up with that many questions for it. And I kept looking at it and going, well, that's the project charter. Mm. Oh, oh initiating as in, the, as in the silo from, yes. develop, okay, develop project charter and identify stakeholders. Yeah, so ah. and I kept looking at it and I'm like, OPAs, EEFs, business <laughs> documents, know your business documents. Wow. Know whether the job is authorized yet. Mm. That was really big, it seemed like to me. There was something on there about a team role. Actually, I'll tell you guys something, an impediment that I had. Mm. So um, this question asked me, uh, this training needs to be done to move your organization over to Agile. My computer, it says, use all three team roles. That's what the question mm. is to do. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't let me paste two in one section. Oh, wow. So hmm. I raised my hand and asked them to come in. And I said, you know, it's not letting me answer this question hmm. um, completely. It keeps telling me to use all three roles, but it won't let me do it. And they're like, wow. oh, click the next page, click this, click that. And nothing was working. And so I flagged it. I wrote it down on my hmm. you know, little whiteboard. And then he said, let me know when you get to the end of the section and, you know, we'll come back in. So the actual like oh moderator came in and he goes answer the best you know how and then we will make a argument hmm. or a case for you for that okay. question that's crazy wow thanks it, for sharing it that it was crazy that but is a also, bit nerve wrecking who even it did throw me off it really did it was question 32 and <laughs> you remember the number <laughs> well i had to write it down because i had other questions flagged right so i was it like, he's like just terrible. flag it and i'm like well i got a bunch of questions flagged how am i gonna know like um That's sick. but make sure you advocate for yourself if you wow. need to it's not thank working. you for sharing that that is yeah. so helpful to know that there's even quirks on the test that could yeah. that would throw some people off like the whole mindset majorly some of us one tiny thing like that would throw off the rest of the test. And that was it just question 32. Did. I feel like it did because all I did was have anxiety about what oh, am I going to do exactly. about that question when we exactly. get there. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. You know. We need to let people know that, hey, yeah, like you said, fight for yourself. And you could get things that are wrong, you know, and that don't work like they should. Oh, that's scary. I've never heard that before. I tell you, I never heard like a question couldn't yeah. function. So it's amazing how much these lessons learn teach us you know what to what to be aware of and it's a major lesson and yeah P pmi yeah P because i hate to bring this up because a happy day but there are a lot of people who pass the test and at the same time pmi says you know the exam is telling us that that wasn't the best experience and they revoke people's and I i'm like pmi come on now come on that's it's, it's, you know, so when something is wrong on their end, it needs to be spoken about because a lot of times they don't hesitate to tell people something's fishy about your exam. So something's fishy about their PMP mm -hmm. exam bank. So, yeah, so I, I don't care. I challenge them on, on things that students need to know about. It, because yeah. what could challenge them and take the survey. If I Both times that I've taken the test, um, there was a survey at the end mm, mm -hmm. and take the, I know you're so excited or yeah. you're so disappointed. <laughs> yes. The first time I was like, screw your stupid survey, I'm going on, I'm out of here. Like this sucks, you know, because it tells you right away. Um, and then the second time I was so excited, I wanted to see, cause it only just says, congratulations, you are now a project manager you know, uh, professional certification. And so you're so excited and you want to know how you did. Like, yeah. how were the targets, you know? Yeah. But I was like, oh, I'm going to take the survey. And I only did that because I feel like other people, mm. PMI needs to know how we feel about this because yep. they're here to service us, but we're also here to service them. Without exactly. project managers, they don't you're, have a PMI. You are so good. That is a good communal view of the world of PMP because if ain't no one saying anything, is gonna continue being wacky and goofy. So yeah. thank you for doing that. And that's that's a real PMP boss mindset. Good, good, good. Wow. April, I'm so proud, I'm so excited, I'm so happy. I can't remember what I was doing. I actually shared the news with my mom. I said, one of my students passed the exam today. I she was so excited. 
before I jumped on this call. So I am mega excited. I'm mega happy. And um, yeah, just keep doing the great things that you are. Keep showing other people the way and keep being an advocate for doing things in a, in a hybrid manner. Now that you know the world of, of Agile, you know the world of predictive and you know the melding of the world, just go into your firm and do whatever you need to do, you know, get it all straight. I have a question for you, Phil. Um, oh what's next? Where do what's, I go from here? What's next? I'll tell you what's next. So here, here's, here's one tip. There's a lot of stuff in the leadership uh, areas of this book um, that I'm telling you, these are for life because my mentor, John C. Maxwell, uh, who, who we call America's leadership guru, he taught me a lot of stuff. And I started putting some of them into the book. So if you read the leadership chapters, you're going to see the five levels of leadership. And then you're going to read about the Hersey Blanchard model. Honestly, those are things for life, the whole situational leadership model stuff. And then the business domain, I took some stuff from Porter's forces. I took some stuff from Colin White and I expanded on them. So the, the business domain and the leadership pieces, those are like for life. Now, I often tell people PMP is the beginning. So you got to go to the next level. And what I would recommend is beginning to think about your definite chief aim in life. This is just the beginning. So beyond PMP, what is your project management or even life legacy going to be? PMP is a great starting point because it gives you all the tools and bells and whistles to make things happen. But do you know there are tons of people that need to be affected and impacted by you, maybe in project management, maybe in just disposition to life, your positive mental attitude that kept you going. So what is your plan? What is your vision? And for that, I tell people to come aboard the Project Leadership Institute. So that's at projectleadershipinstitute.com. Because I know we say project management. And management is a great word. It has to do with administration of systems and processes and procedures. But leadership, in my mind, is an even greater word because it has to do with people. And that's why a lot of us gravitate to agile. Because agile, the number one thing it says, individuals and interactions over processes and tools, customer collaboration. And it says, give the team the environment and support they need. So it's very leadership driven. And everything rises and falls on leadership. I'm telling you, if you want to be a great project manager, elevate your leadership and you'll be able to go higher. If you want to be a, a poor, limited, studied project manager, stay here. Look, I hate to preach Pembok to you, April, but I got to open up this book one more time. I got to open to page 53. There's something I want to show you here. So let, let me take off my glasses. I don't ever want to see that book ever again. No, <laughs> but, but look, 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 it's so important. I've highlighted it in pink. Let me read it for you. It says, research shows that successful project managers consistently and effectively use certain essential skills. Research reveals, watch this April, the top 2% of project managers as designated by their bosses and team members, not even them saying, yeah, I'm the big kahuna. No, it's their bosses and team members. They distinguish themselves by demonstrating superior relationship and communication skills while displaying a positive attitude. Page 53, oh my goodness. So you mean it's not those who can do the best Gantt chart or it's not those who can do the best risk analysis. It's interpersonal skills, it's communication, yep. it's leadership. So what I recommend to folks is you get done with PMP, join the Project Leadership Institute, and we have different programs. So if you just wanted to get on the railroad tracks the right way, come aboard for a month and see how it elevates you. Because what we do, we take what your definite chief aim is and coach you towards it, whether you want your resume to be reborn, whether you want to go for the next big job. I've had so many folks come through and say, Phil, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this job. Help me. And I coach them, train them, and help them, and they get jobs that are like three, four times what they're currently making, but we show them, hey, it can be done. So it's coaching, training, mentoring, in leadership, because everything rises and falls on leadership. I love Gantt charts. I love risk. <laughs> I love schedule, but, but I'm telling you, what elevated me to the level I got to in a lot of firms, including Honeywell, well, it wasn't the Gantt charts. It was actually the relational skills I developed. And that's what helped me get ahead. And I truly believe that a lot of PMPs, they're being dwarfed and shortchanged because they're not showing 
the great interpersonal skill. Or they don't know how. They they just feel, okay, let me keep going. Let me keep going. Phil, what's next? RMP. Okay, let me go for that. SP. And I'm like, those are great. Trust me. I'm a I'm a certification junkie. But I also know that all those certifications without the leadership component, really honing in on it, 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 it doesn't really lead to where it could if you add the leadership component. So think about that, April, projectleadershipinstitute.com. And also think about, like Roy and I are starting the ACP training as well. I was just going to ask you about that. The yeah, agileprinciple.com. Like my personal goals are going into IT and not to take mm. up too much of anyone's time. You got to gotta, gotta come. Because I know construction so well, but agile you gotta really come. focuses on the, um, or excuse me, the medical and the IT really focus mm -hmm. on agile practices. Oh, yeah. And I just want to make myself the better candidate. Oh, absolutely. So, so two things, April. And in, you know, and I know a bunch of people are going to benefit from what we're talking about here. But one, definitely think about getting a bit more in depth right off the bat, like today or tomorrow. The website that we mentioned, Ken Schwaber, go to scrum.org and begin to play around with the idea of getting your PSM within the next four weeks. And the reason why I say that is because Ken has a very different exam than the CSM, the Certified Scrum Master, which, by the way, he started as well. But he pulled out and formed his own uh, company. CSM is, is great. The training is great. We have a lot of great CSTs, although the exam is not as formidable as the PSM. The PSM will really kick you into awareness of Am I, do I even know Scrum? You know, it will hyperdrive your understanding. So this is a message I preach to everyone that comes through the masterclass. We have two students currently, uh, Yvonne and Fome. They are still on the journey to PMP, but you know what happened after we trained them, coached them in Agile? They went ahead and took the PSM. And they are now both PSMs, and they're moving to take PMP. And they got PSM certified as a result of the training. So it is doable, but it's a really great thing when your senses to Scrum are really on hyperdrive because you can smell a mile away what is fake agile and what is what is real. You get more attuned to the world of Scrum and therefore a little bit more into the world of agile than you have been. I know you've been through stuff with us, but this, this will take it up a level. Now, in addition to PSM, I'm telling you a lot of things, April, I know. But in addition to PSM, Roy and I were doing the ACP, which is we, we go deeper because we go deeper into leadership from the leadership perspective. So if these are things you want to do, add them to your to-do list and just pin them. Who's the PSM through? That's through PMI as, as it's well? It's through Ken Schwaber, Ken Schwaber's company. Okay, so scrum.org. Yeah. But I can show you what you need to do. A lot of it is just get the scrum guide, which you already know. But yeah. this time you're going to read the scrum guide laser focused on every word. Also, listen to my scrum guide audio because I read the whole thing. Just listen to it repeatedly. Get the essence of scrum and begin taking his exams over again. I know that you did, you know, before, because we had that conversation where I'm like, you should only be going to PSM, scrumguide.org. Don't go anywhere else. So go to that site. Uh, yeah, I was a bit of a junkie. Go to that site and really pound on his PSM mocks. They call them Scrum Open. And I'm telling you, by the time you do that about 10 times and you're getting like hundreds, you are getting to the ready zone. Mm -hmm. But take everything else and then ping me and I'll, I'll tell you what else that you, know, you need to hone in on. Okay, I'm sure your family is like, isn't he going to just let you... Finish no, you're girl. fine. Is being <laughs> an Eastern term because I've never heard it until I talked to some Eastern coast. Is ping mean message? Yeah, just email. Okay. You know, <laughs> it's it it speak. <laughs> I'll put that in my um, engagement portfolio for sure. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay, so but, you know I've got like a program for you: PSM, ACP, PLI. Th those are nice uh, steps because, you know, the kind of people we are as humans, especially those of us who go take PMP, it just shows you've got a high tolerance for ambiguity. You've got a high capacity for information. 
So why stop? It's a lifelong right. journey. And then when well, you get... And you work so hard for this. Why stop? You learned all this information. Do something with it. And that's exactly. where... Exactly. I'm like, I got this right now in my brain. What can else can I do? <laughs> <laughs> I love your propensity. So <laughs> I love it. And I know that you're going into other areas, but also check out the Lean Construction Institute. When you get a moment, I'm going to put it in, in the uh, chat, leanconstruction.org. Just see what's going on in the world of construction and how agile and lean are being leveraged. It's, it's just good, good That's conversation and information yeah. to have. Yeah, I'll put that in the chat. And okay. we continue the discussion offline. <laughs> Thank you, April. Thanks for coming. Thank Does you, anyone Jeff. have anyone have any questions before April goes to enjoy her PMP day? I mean, I got to give it to you because this is a day you got certified, and this crazy instructor said, "Come share with us on the day you got certified." No break. <laughs> I, I have really appreciated April. Any questions before April goes? Yes, congratulations, April. We'll miss you. Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> oh, thank you, Trace. I'm gonna miss you too. <laughs> Do come back once in a while. Don't be a stranger. April, what was the single, what would you say was the single most uh, important strategy that helped you? Cynthia, honestly, be, be a servant leader to your team and your project. Okay. Know in your mind that's what you have to do. You just have to keep it going. You're going to do wonderful. I've done a ton of questions with you. Girl, you got it. You're an inspiration. Thank you. <laughs> you too. This again. <laughs> April. All right. Any other questions so we can let our guru go and have a party? What are you going to do today, April, to celebrate your success? Are you going to do anything tonight? I must be doing pretty well because I already drank half a bottle of champagne and <laughs> uh, vodka cranberries. So cheers. I don't have all. anything elaborate, but I will sure remember you when I'm, I'm having not much this of a drink. drinker. <laughs> so it's wonderful. My husband came home early and celebrated with me. You know, uh, it's, it's your team that helps you too. And um, my husband stepped in a lot and uh, took control of things so I could go wow. do my thing. And, you know, it's just that it's, wonderful to have that support so wow. we celebrated together because it was his sacrifice too absolutely well congrats to you both and your whole family and thank you for coming to speak to us on your pmp birthday my goodness thank you so much thank you bye guys good luck bye.